he said there are two extremes which ought not to be practiced. Indulgence in sense pleasures and practicing self-mortification. He taught neither of those was beneficial. And then, leading on from that, is the, the dichotomy which has existed not only at that time, but even up to today. The two opposing views of what happens to us eventually. One is the doctrine of eternalism, the other the doctrine of annihilationism. The eternalists say we have Artman and that goes on and on and on. The annihilationists say at death everything is finished. Nothing goes on. Now if you are an annihilationist you would possibly be someone who indulges in sense pleasures because there's nothing after this so you may as well get on enjoy yourself as much as you can because it doesn't matter what you do just have a good time on the other hand if you are someone engaging in the practice of self-mortification then you're more likely to be an eternalist because you want to believe that whatever practices you do in this life will bring some kind of benefit to you in the next life. So there's an element of eternalism. Well, Eternalist views can be refuted by the analysis that the Abhidhamma gives us. It shows us nothing exists for more than a split second. The annihilationist point of view can be refuted by the doctrine of the synthesis because it shows that everything is interconnected it doesn't just stop it goes on and on and on now one difference we have between the suttas and the abhidhamma is the different levels at which the Buddha taught. He taught in terms of conventional truth and ultimate truth. The conventional truth is the everyday language that we use here and now. We talk of tables, chairs. If I ask you, please, can you bring me a chair? And you pick up the table, we're going to have chaos. So this is conventional. Using the English language, we call one thing a table, another thing a chair. And that's good. Very, very necessary for everyday conventional uh, intercourse, discussion. So, there's nothing wrong with the conventional language. Um, we talk about um, sunrise. See you tomorrow morning at sunrise. I think we all know what that means. Actually, the sun has not done anything. The sun hasn't risen and it doesn't go somewhere at sunset. 
but for conventional purposes, very useful to talk about sunrise and sunset. So conventional truth is very, very, very helpful for normal everyday language. The Buddha himself used conventional language, which we find mostly in the suttas. When you talk about a person, you talk about you or me. He would talk about you will receive the comic consequences of your actions. He will say, um, you will be doing something unskillful if you kill your mother or your father. He would talk about um, you should not cause a schism in the Sangha. And he would talk about I. I am telling you so-and-so. And that's, that's all fine. But these are actually um, imprecise in that the word, um, well, he talked about a cow. We normally know what we mean by cow. But he said once the cow butcher or his apprentice has been to work, where's your cow? All you've got is a collection of bits, leg, bits of body, head, ears, tail, etc. You haven't got a cow. A cow was just <coughs> an artificial construct. In the same way he would talk about a chariot. Again, the chariot has no independent existence. The chariot is made up of parts, and you can break it down into these constituent parts. And in the same way, the Abhidhamma breaks down <coughs> conventional truth into its constituent parts. And there are what he calls four ultimate truths. Chitta, Chittasika, Rupa, Nibbana. 